Good frosty evening to you, YouTube. You know why I never seriously pursued any of my brilliant invention ideas? Because you have to warranty your products to moronic customers who misuse them, break them, and then blame you. End users are idiots. Case in point, I misused and promptly dickered my M12 soldering iron. I was welding a crack in my plastic firewood holder, really digging into the molten plastic and putting a ton of heat load on it. It was also colder than Hades testicles in the shop, which didn't help. A true torture test, and not something I'd recommend. Now it just blinks, indicating that it's trying to heat, but it's been a few minutes and nothing. Rather than be lazy and send it back under warranty, let's do the honorable thing and fix it ourselves and become the warranty. First things first, we gotta remove all of the T10 Torx screws. Don't forget the sneaky one here. Next, we'll remove this spring clip. Just bend the tab up a little bit and pop it out. Take the tip apart like so. The easiest way to get the clamshell open is to fold the head to a 90 degree angle and just pop it open. And here's the little PCB that interfaces the heating element with the control board. First, you want to check for power coming from the control board through the interface board to the heating element. Use this big wad of solder on the interface board as your ground and peel back a little bit of the insulation on the upstream side of the metal thermal fuse for your positive lead. If we have voltage here, it means the battery and control board check out okay and we can move on to the next step. Next, check for a burnt out thermal fuse. Peel back the insulation on the downstream leg of the fuse and check voltage. No voltage means bad fuse. If you have voltage, your element's probably burned out. Here's the fuse crimped in line. To replace it, you'll need a 125 degree C rated 15 amp thermal fuse. I use one rated for 142 degree C because I'm a total badass. Also because there were no 125 degree C fuses on Amazon Prime. The challenge with soldering is obvious. The heat from the iron has to heat the leads up enough so that they melt the solder so you can tin it. But that's just going to conduct into the fuse and blow it right away. That's why they crimp it from the factory. But I have a plan. First, instead of snipping the leads to length, just bend them around and solder the wires on the very end. This gives you more metal between your iron and the fuse itself. Next, put every alligator lead you've got between your iron and the fuse as heat sinks. If you take these measures and work quick, you won't need the special crimps. Tin the first end, just get it hot and real quick and done. After you're done, just make sure there's continuity across the fuse in case you screwed the pooch. If you did, don't worry about it. These fuses come as a five pack. But in this case, we're good. Rather than cut the crimp off and have to strip wire and make a new end, I'm just gonna put solder directly onto the brass crimp. It takes solder very well and will absorb a lot of heat away from the fuse when you go to solder it. Take the longest piece of heat shrink tubing you can fit and slide it over the end. I found eight millimeter worked pretty well. If you'll notice, I've got my alligator lead heat sinks in place. Get the solder on the crimp fully melted and then just done. Same thing on the other end. And just one more good luck continuity check before we put the heat shrink tubing on. I'm gonna compress these bends as much as possible just to make it fit nicely. And then shrink the heat shrink tubing with your heat gun on the highest possible setting. Wait, no, lowest possible setting. Quick function test before we put it all back together. Oh, she's smoking already. Oh, that feels good on my cold hands. Shove some of the wiring back down into the clamshell and note that this notch in the molding corresponds to this notched corner on the circuit board. Make sure it goes in the right way.
put the LED back in. So uh, why didn't you just send it back under warranty? Because I am the warranty man. Oh, by the way, take a note. This screw that goes into the sticker right here is longer than the others. Oh yeah, sneaky Pete. Bend this little tab back down so it can actually do its job. And pop it right back in. I'll include a link to the fuses I used in the description, as well as a link to a replacement heating element if you find out that's your problem. Now let's see if we can solder. It's only been about 10 seconds, but this thing's pretty powerful. 15 seconds from cold to soldering. I love this thing. Looks like we're back in business. Hey, thanks for watching.